Hello, ma'am. I am very honored and privileged to present to you the certificate of appreciation on behalf of my fellow contestant for as you to be our grand patron for our AYV Nosins University this year, 2023. We're so honored. <laughs> we so we're honored to present to you the certificate. Thank you. So this is certificate of inviting me. Yes. <laughs> we'll also send you a certificate of response. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They try to get at me, right? Madam <laughs> First Lady, please, I also want to tap on your boots. Can I please? Oh, come on. They get a very good coach. You sit on at the back, right? <laughs> yeah. Madam First Lady, you all know when it comes to entertainment, you're actually a fanatic. One way or the other, you played your contribution, you played your work. As a result, on behalf of myself and on behalf of the, my fellow contestants, we formally invite you for the AYV Miss University 2023, happening on the 24th of April, 2024, at the Radis in the Brazil. We'll be honored for you to be there, sitting right in front and cheering for each and every one of us at the end of the day. Thank you so much. Madam, are we saying anything? Or today you just send people a Good afternoon, Madam First Lady, and good afternoon to the First Lady of Faith. Ladies, good afternoon. We just want to especially thank you for um, honoring us. Uh, your presence and allowing us to be here. We're very, very, very honored. And we also want to thank you for your work, particularly when it comes to young children, young people in Sierra Leone. Looking at your initiative, Hands Off Our Girls, um, which is an amazing um, project, an amazing initiative. Somebody that champions young women and stand for them. And these young ladies here today as well, uh, we thank you that you are You've accepted the certificate as our grand patron, so thank you for that, madam. And um, we hope to see you on the 26th uh, as you continue your work uh, as the mama of this nation, the mother of this nation. We honor you, we thank you. Thank you for having us. My name is Cordelia Poorai from AYB. Thank you. Uh, 
can see my sister from the University of Madeira. Of course, all of you are sisters, and we wish you very best. But you are supporting you. Know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be part of it. There is there's an adage that says, give reference to we are coming for always. It's like I stood up for Pujo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, ladies, you're okay. welcome from the AYD. Um, I want to just want to say this opportunity to thank AYD on behalf of the Office of the Council for giving us very good visibility in everything. We've always been there in fact tomorrow in the morning I'll be there again at the visual friends of this program. Um, you're welcome. This is the Office of the Model of the Nation. Yeah. 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 If we're, if we're about to, if we, if we're at a, a function now, that's when that the spokesperson <laughs> speaks like the spokesperson. <laughs> you're so modest and so cool here. I don't know whether you're trying to impress anybody. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 you know, I mean, I suspect you. <laughs> okay. and with special reference to Unima. <laughs> You know, but um, I am humbled. I'm very happy that you have taken the time to come to this most boring office, mm -hmm. but it's the people's office. Yes. But I'm more impressed that, you know, it's a gentleman who had to introduce all the beautiful ladies. Mr. Rex, thank you. And, uh, you know, we, what we are fighting for is not to take over, we just want to be allies. So when we do things too, we also want to see the men there supporting us. This is a clear you know, demonstration for me that you actually believe in women empowerment. I'm both of you supporting them coming here. If this room was full with women, it would be a surprise because you know, this, this I won't say this is our time, <laughs> but we're making good use of our time. But the fact that you also decided to, you know, put on the best suit you have today, <laughs> and you are looking shiny, <laughs> and I was invited, I had to, you know, I had to wait for you ladies, and I'm not there because of you ladies. So, so I just want to say thank you, thank you so very much, all of you, and thank you not only for coming to to this office but for being a great ambassador for your university by extension you are already an ambassador for your community and an ambassador for Sierra Leone when you are a woman we understand what our challenges are we have to work double we have to impress we have to prove a point all the time and for you people in this new millennium and this generation, we are fighting now to give you the, the bridging space that you deserve. Everything that we are doing is to enable you people to be able to enjoy them freely so you don't have to give more than what you need to give in the future. So you have a platform, you have an opportunity, make good use of it, be a good ambassador for our country, represent your community well, because when you represent your community, it means you're representing yourself. Just believe in your conscience and have a dream and don't allow anybody to kill your dream. It is much easier to be a beauty queen by people looking at you, but it is more greater to be a true queen by serving your people. That is when you actually know that you, you are a queen. A queen is not about makeup and lipstick. It's not about nice clothes. It's not about taking attention from others and bringing them to you just because of how you look. The queen is about service. You serve your people. You know, you are the queen. But in real fact, you are the slave. Because you have to be giving back to your people all the time. Don't say, well, I am the queen now. I'm going to change my personality. I'm going to be rude because everyone said I am a queen. I'm going to be rude. That definitely has taken that title away immediately. You have to be humble. You have to be respectful because respect is two way. If you give me, I'll give it back to you. If you take it away from me, I pay back. I 
expect to screw with. Whatever you expect of yourself, you should be able to give to others the same. So I've received your invitation. Unfortunately, I'm not able to give you an answer right now because it's the independent belief. And I know that His Excellency has a schedule for independent. Let me go back and look at that schedule and see how I fit in. But AYV know if I come, I'll be there. AYV has never called me on anything and I don't call. Because AYV has been one of the biggest supporters of the Hands of Our Girls campaign. When AYV call, they know they're calling a system. I will do everything humanly possible to come and support. But I'm not able to give you an answer now because as much as I love AYV, I love Mother Beard and Beard. <laughs> <laughs> so when he demands, I have to be there. Yes. So let me go and check his schedule and check mine and see where everything fits. And I'll get back to Nabo so that he'll inform you guys if I'll be there or not. But whatever happens, I am here already. So it means I'm already there. Yes. Whether I am there or not, I'll be cheering you up. And it would be nice for me to like get to know you guys, you know, just like just tell me as much as you feel as a queen right now, what is your biggest fear? What is it that you're expecting from yourself? Or what is it that you think when you become this wonderful queen serving all universities. That's a huge constituency. To be the queen of universities, I mean, we're talking about millions of people. So, what is what, what difference would you want to bring into that institution? Why your own brain would be better than hers? You know, it would be nice to just get to know a few things from you guys. So, from here, I don't miss easily. Anybody who know me, when I go to a beauty competition, before they start, from the day you talk to me, you can ask Nabo, I'll tell him who the queen is. And I have not missed once. <laughs> so, it'll be nice to just get to know you guys. I don't know if you want to start.
So for continuity and for me to get more effective results, this is why I am opening my community L clubs and my school L clubs. So this is what I'll be focusing once I win the AYT University. Thank you very much. I don't want to do regional business, but is anybody here from Kono? <laughs> hello, ma'am, and hello, everyone. So, I am Maritu Maita Sise, and I am a mental health advocate. So, me coming for the AY Vietnamese University has to be one of my greatest um, inspiration and a surprise to me. So, I Thought of, I want to create awareness. I want to um, to break stereotypes that is associated with mental health. I cannot do it um, just on my own or with the the small things I've been doing with communities and friends and all of that. So I was like, let me use this platform, collaborate, create partnership to help me to to, to let people know what mental health is all about because mental health has been um, the topic that's trending especially on social media and it is very much important for us to know what it is and how we should take care of what our mental health is and the the stereotypes and how we should not divert um, from what it really is so I um, I personally have gone through mental health challenges it's not me being mentally uh, disturbed or I went crazy or a case, no. But I had people, I had family that went through mental health challenges. Um, not because they, they, had, um, they don't have privile privileges or whatever, but they went through mental health issues. But we didn't know what it really was. So we had that finger pointed at us that, okay, you brought that on case. And we don't have uh, much facilities for people going through that particular thing. We don't have um, healthcare professionals. We only have like the, the mental health fund. So I wanted to use this platform to to make sure we have like more ter um, therapies, counselors to you go to people, just professional people you could go to to seek help because some um, certain times. We need people we talk to, to, for, to for us to like feel ease and then we can be, be a better uh, person. So I use um, my inspiration and experiences to make my voice be heard, I, to create the awareness of mental health and break the stereotypes associated with mental health. <laughs> Good afternoon once again, Madam First Lady. I am Amzat Kadiatis Manita, a representative from the Council of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. I must say gratitude to you, Madam First Lady, for your immense effort in contributing to the development of the globe. I am an advocate and a founder of the Center for Girls and Women Empowerment Organization, an organization which is based on helping girls aware of their rights their values and significant roles they can play in the development of the group. I was so impressed to, when I saw your post yesterday on Facebook about this early marriage thing. Mm -hmm. I am an advocate of early marriage and ever since I come into this pageant, I have been advocating about early marriage. And mm -hmm. so therefore, Madam First Lady, I am kindly pleading, I want to join you on this campaign because I always shed tears whenever I think of my childhood friend, Katu, who we always go to school together, play together. She always wanted to become a medical doctor. But honestly, because of selfish reasons of her parents, they sent her into a matrimonial slavery. Fatu is now has now given back to three children. Imagine, she now has the look of a 40 years old woman. Whenever I look at her, I almost shed tears. That is why I want to break the change. I want to be a voice to end early marriage. And I want to thank AYV for this opportunity, for bringing us here today, for me to speak to you in person. Please, my first lady, I want to ask for this request to join you in this campaign. I will be very much grateful for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
you asked for it, right? Yes. <laughs> Hello once again, my name is I am Latreva Yemalva Davis, Black Incident in the University of Makini. Personally, I am a lady of humility that do endorse by taking a stance on what I believe in, and I live by the credo determination leads to success. My quest for the Miss University is not only to sensitize, raise awareness, but to amplify a particular alarming issue that is not only affecting Syria, that is not only affecting the continent of Africa, rather it's a global phenomenon, which is climate change. Upon arriving to Syria, I got to understand that climate change is not only detrimental to us, but it's also detrimental to our future generation. It's something that is um, sustainable. It's, so, it's also so serious to an extent, even the government of Syria they have to do about something about it, and there's a special office for it that is headed by Dr. Yungla. It's so serious to an extent, even the conference of parties that is hosted annually, they deliberate on this specific issue, which is climate change. So I'm here not only to be an ambassador for change, I'm here not to only be an advocate, but one third of the news publication that exits news firms, they advocate about something like this, but it's not amplified quite enough for people to hear at the end of the day. Furthermore, looking at it from another angle, I want, I believe in the adage that says, action speaks louder than voice. In as much as here is a platform for us to showcase what we have, in as much as here is also a platform for us to do light proposal, light project, as great with great power comes with great responsibility. In my only two way, I have played my own part. That is by collaborating with the Ministry of Environment in Bombali District to help mitigate. At the end of the day, looking at it from any aspect, change starts with you and I. If I were to advocate or to be an ambassador for climate change, as much as I would try to do everything within my power to eradicate it, I can't do it alone. And that is why I want it to be amplified, loud and clear to people all over Sierra Leone at the end of the day. So I'm calling on everyone to join me on this fight. Because Sierra Leone, the only one someone I will get. And at the end of the day, in as much as we care about ourselves, all in the name of profitability or economic viable activities, we also have to take into cognizance that our future generations they need to enjoy the deserve a better story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because 
as they say, young people are already taking leads and I'm happy people are coming out of their comfort zone. But then again, it's not only about B. There has to be a plan B. So that is why I'm honored that AYB has given us this opportunity to voice out things that we, we've been battling with and things we are fighting for. So Madam First Lady, Office of the First Lady, my fellow queens, and all Serenians, I'm calling on you all to help us fight this battle because for our students to have suffered, let's say, eight or nine years in university and come down to no job or maybe a little job opportunity, it's heartbreaking for both the students and the sponsors that will have paid for the education. So by attaining this skills in university, they can be able to balance their schools while attaining the, the, the essential skills for entrepreneurship. Because I believe entrepreneurship is a tool, a key tool for development. And I am especially referring to vulnerable women out there. I am somebody who was grown up in a single parent family and since age 17 I've been the one taking care of myself. And apart from my education that I'm acquiring, I also made sure I become an entertainer, which I believe I can express my skills and creativity freely. I'm an actress, a model, and also an event MC. However, there are women out there who don't have the opportunity to take the path that I take, probably because of early decisions or because they don't have decisions at all. Therefore, I am the co-founder of Choice Empire, which is an organization that focuses on empowering women through vocational and entrepreneurial skills training and teaching. My main aim for coming on this platform is for me to unite women all over the country for us to bring them together, especially vulnerable women, to teach them entrepreneurial and vocational skills for free. And whilst at that, we also ensure we, we offer to them psychosocial therapy, because most of those women that are going through the struggles in life have mental issues that they face, because they go through depression and sometimes they lack confidence in society. So even before we take the step of giving them the skills, obtaining them the skills, we ensure that we try as much as possible to prepare their minds for what they are supposed to do and what they are to do after they acquire the skills. Therefore, Madam President, thank you for this opportunity for speaking to you. I hope everybody here will support me. Is it a purpose? No, no. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank, uh, I want to crave all of your support here because in as much as my focus is primarily on women, I am also focused on bringing together men. The main aim why I want to bring together these men is to sensitize them and educate them on the importance of them supporting their women gain financial independence. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the women, but it's about creating an atmosphere where both genders can uplift and support each other, thereby fostering a very well flourishing home and community. Thank you once again. I, I pity, I pity you, but <laughs> anyway, you know, um, I go to universe, I go to um, beauty contest, um, of course, Miss Serenione and stuff, but I think this is a different lesson. <laughs> Miss University is a different level, and uh, after listening to all of you, now I really will go and check my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 really I am going to check my views diary, you know. Fingers crossed. But uh, whatever happened, just know that um, I am with you. I don't want to be with you, Spirit. I want to be with you, person. <laughs> and I'm going to try to make it happen. Yeah. 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 
thank you so very much for coming here. I know you are supposed to be at rehearsals. You are supposed to be checking the outfits. <laughs> you are now praying. That people who don't pray, you know, this is the time they are very close to God. <laughs> you know? But look, there is only going to be one. That doesn't mean you all are not queens. You are your own queen in your own way, rightfully so. So enjoy it. You are the lucky one from your university. You will just start to say, big deal. Don't go there and say, I am here to compete. Go there and say to yourself, I am here to enjoy it. It is only when you enjoy it, you become easier. When you compete, you be so tense, you forget to smile all throughout because you are competing. Yes. I'm saying this because I know. I've done this before. I know how hard it is. So enjoy it. Don't compete. Just go there and enjoy it and say, you know what? There's only going to be one winner. If you have that belief in yourself, and go there and flow, you could be the queen. Because as I sit here right now, any one of you, this one is tough. But when you leave, I'm going to call in my queen. <laughs> and I will tell Salim, and then we'll see what happens. I'm not going near the judges. I don't sit with the judges. I don't even speak to the judges. So just know, it will just be my own. In fact, I'll write it in an envelope and just sell it. And then we'll, we'll watch and see, right? <laughs> Excellency, on the very serious I think this is going to be my first time that You know, when you listen to people, you begin to understand where the country is now moving to. Uh, how many of you are to send yourself a comment? I love one. You know, you know <laughs> everything that you guys well, you do. Yeah, no, just no, I'm coming, just I know why you are he's asking for St. Joseph. No, you want me to ask one. You know, because <laughs> I'm not I will definitely do good. <laughs> you see, the, the things that ladies spoke about. I'm really tough and very serious. Those you know, are issues that's affecting the whole world today. And why Our Excellency was making a remark, we are currently pushing a bill. The proposal is now available for us to have a child. Uh, have a child. Uh, to, to make sure we have uh, a bill that would forbid early uh, marriage in this country. Uh, Whosoever emerges the queen for this event should be considered as our, one of our ambassadors because this is a part of something that is still there to us. So it's up to you, ladies. And somebody spoke about climate change, and uh, we are seeing what is happening around the world. And those are all critical issues. Somebody, my, my dear sister, spoke about interference. Key. And I, I happen to be a beneficiary because when I was in university, we had good respect. I was going to Professor Agali. That you choose to introduce that because we all now believe that after university, we have to go and look for white collar jobs. And as my brothers and sisters, and one of the richest guys in the world today, they are all from those informal sectors. That's where they rise up to make their money. So let's start thinking about an alternative arrangement after educated university. And uh, somebody spoke about mental health. Uh, everybody in the country now mad. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, mental health is telling me that when you see somebody working in the street, but even our, among ourselves, we don't have other things that we think about. And uh, somebody spoke about drugs, which is now one of the major social problems in the country. So, everything that we spoke about in this meeting happens to be a threat to national security. I always put it that way. That, those are things that we need to work very hard to address. So I have my excellencies carefully put it. The Queen is with the mouth. And I, I will respectfully ask our excellency that that Queen need to support her in this child rights, uh, having child marriage proposal. It's very, if you champion it, 
definitely nobody is going to stand up to make sure that it happens. Inshallah. So everybody is equipped. That I'm hundred percent sure. And now to my brother Rex, uh, I feel very honored when I see a former a new news president championing this agenda. Um, years back, I was president news. And I want to say thank you so much, you know, bringing women together. I excellency always tell me that when you fight for a lady, you become a global champion. So keep it up. And so the spokesperson, my brother, who knows I did now, so we got it up. We will go down. So thank you so much. We are really impressed. I will endeavor to join my High Excellency if she's going. Let me say go watch them. Even if I don't go, you should go. No, definitely. You've already declared that this is this will be your first. No, I know the good. But this is the real I will go. Um, for me. Listening to all of you, the good thing about it is that you know the new direction government should count itself fulfilled. This is the first time I'm hearing young ladies expressing their dreams and desire without no hesitation and fear. None of you here spoke out of the box. When you were speaking, I listened to you carefully, I knew it was coming from your heart. Why did the ICD the new direction government? That's the essence and power of education. We are only able to listen to you because you are in institutions of learning. And as you went through your individual stories, if our excellency's chances of going was below 40 percent, mm -hmm. yeah, as a researcher, <laughs> I now begin to assume that that figure has changed. I won't tell you whether it has gone down or what. But this is also what she has been fighting for, for you women to be able to inspire the next generation. I was very gratified to hear that you were inspired by her work. I mean, even the almighty Allah that created us, he said, say time to me and I will reward you now. I'm sure that appreciation is going to inspire her and prepare her energy to the next level of the other challenge women are facing. As somebody who has two beautiful girls, I now have the belief that my future is assured because my girls will not be kind of like subjected to the ease of society and cultural things. My sister and my mother and other people went through. My excellency, I think the beginning of a new direction and the reward of all of your hard work is being paid off here. Thank you very much. Okay, see, I am surrounded by men. <laughs> Oh, yes. we won't allow the men to just sit there. I want to stand very impressed. Very first time listening to Queens. I had been to Miss Yale. Miss Yale last year. This is my very first time listening to the University of Queens. You guys talk for yourself. I'm impressed. I don't want to be, I don't know, there's no place for China, but I'm hoping that one of you become the winner. Well, yeah, my, they, one of them get yeah, my you. interest is. <laughs> you guys, you, oh, you so you have interest already. Yes, <laughs> but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So now you and you and so folks don't get interest. Now, 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 um, because I know you guys have to go, and I also have to work. Let me let me finally close this meeting. Because as it is, the men don't want us to finish. They want to go on and on and on and on and on. And on. Um, but I will finish, and then our queen will now give us the vote of thanks. So, thank you again. This is on behalf of the office of the first lady. And thank you for choosing me today as one of the persons you have to visit. I'm grateful and I'm very humble. You could have gone anywhere else in this country. And I don't think you would ask to be anywhere and they won't allow you to be there. But I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I truly, truly am inspired by all your words and uh, aspirations and that the things that you want to do are also there to me. So please, this is a dream. Don't allow it to die. Keep it alive. Focus on it. And don't say, I someone have to come and help me before I do it. No. 
just continue to do it and see how God opened the way for you. Because when somebody contributes meaningfully, positively to society, God always come down and show you the way. And what Salim is asking for, he knows he's, he's not supposed to be asking me that on camera. <laughs> so I won't answer. I'm just going to wish everybody well because it's possible that with all of you that have spoken here right now, due to competition, that is where you have some shock. I don't know whether the next queen will be somebody that has inspired me more. All of you have spoken. Few of you have actually touched my heart. So I wish and pray that the few of you that have actually touched my heart be the queen. I don't know uh, how it's going to be like, but that's what my wish is. Because for you to be a campaigner, you have to be believable. When you speak, people have to listen, not because of your position, but you should be able to touch them and touch them positively. So please continue to do what you're doing. Mental health is absolutely one of the big issues we have in the world today, especially Africa, where we are too ashamed to talk about it. Climate change, I am um, one of the eight eminent people for zero waste under the United Nations, which is also called to by climate change. Every other issue that um, you guys have talked about, from early marriage to um, entrepreneurship to job creation, these are the, you know, it's, they are meaningful. These are not just gimmicks. These are contributing to other people's lives positively. So my prayer for all of you is that after this competition, may you, may God be there with you to make your dream come true. Mm -hmm. Because every dream that you have spoken about in this office here does not. Let it work for you all and let it be easy for you all. Yeah? yeah? yeah. If um, my office is the people's office, sometimes I am crazy, crazy busy. But if there's anything, you know, after this that you wanted to do and you want us to listen, he's my chief of staff, so he has no choice but to listen. The two here are my technical advisors, they have no choice but to listen. And if they listen to you, they will force me to listen to you. So come to any one of them. We can talk to them, and they will brief me, and um, I'll find time to sit with you. Okay? God bless you all. Thank you very much, ma'am. So just before I close, there are two things I would love to highlight about the Miss University pageant. So Miss University pageant is a non-bikini pageant that specifically promotes decency, modesty, and elegance in women. So on the day for the finals, there will be nothing like the bikini area. So if you're going for bikini. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Miss University was more like a foundation for me because I do come from a very strict and religious home I must say it was more like a taboo for me to even mention pageantry and it's not just for me there are other there are other girls or other women out there that do have interest in pageantry but are being scared either because of the background or this stigma attached with pageantry in particular so Miss University is like a foundation for girls like me and I must say this has been a grooming era for me I was barely 17, barely 18 years old when I won Miss University pageant. My father almost killed me. <laughs> it was it was not easy at all, but I did I didn't see it as a way or as as an excuse for me to be exposed to things I'm not supposed to be to be doing. It was more like a space for me to improve myself and the women around me because my, well, my topic is equally around women empowerment, but it's more about feminine hygiene and decency. So I've been able, to, I've worked in different communities and market areas in my college, in schools, my friends. I do have women that do call me on a normal day. Oh, Mariam, I'm going 
I'm going through this and this and this, what should I do? So it has really made me feel relevant amongst my peers. I'm always busy doing something or trying to help others. So I do feel like this is not just a regular pageant. It's nothing, it has nothing to do with you just having the posture and the beauty. You have to be willing to serve or you, you must be willing to give back to people. And that's why the, the, um, the theme of the pageant is Beautiful Brains. And whosoever wins Miss University Sierra Leone will have to represent Sierra Leone at Miss University Africa in Nigeria, contesting with about 54 different African countries. So this is not a small pageant. And I must also attest that um, I'm really impressed with all the queens. Mm -hmm. I don't have a favorite, but I know that it's going to be tough. I will just put the crown and let the best man win. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's always like that. It's all, all the colleges do send their best candidates. So it's, it's a real competition. But um, I'm sure whoever wins, you deserves to win. I've carried this crown with so much grace and so much voice. So I know the next person will definitely take after me in a great way. So um, we are done for today. We are so happy, Madam First Lady, for accepting our invite, and we are happy to see you. I was actually seated just on your on your right for Miss for Miss Sierra Leone. I was seated just close to you at the patron. I was there as well. So. She was very, she was interested in the whole pageant. So I was there, we were like contemplating, oh, this, no, We are all there to find the queen. Yes, we are all there to find the queen. So we really hope to see you there. And I will definitely be seated by you this time around. <laughs> Thank you so much, the office of the First Lady, AYB, our, our next queen, and the rest of the queens. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to try to move those chairs.